Welcome to our GMAT Focus Edition first video of this online course to get you prepped for this MBA primarily applications exam. So in this video, we're going to talk about a very important question. Why choose the GMAT Focus Edition for your MBA application? And especially, why do so if the test scores are optional? And there are certainly some programs that say the test scores are optional, whether that's the GMAT Focus or the GRE or some other exam. But optional doesn't mean that they're ignored. And ultimately, you'll only want to consider a test score to be completely unnecessary if your target program or programs say they are test blind, meaning they won't even look at the scores. Because high scores will still look good on your application if you submit them. And you might get asked about why you don't submit a score if you choose not to. Furthermore, some scholarships and grant money that might be available for merit or need could depend on a certain score from a standardized test as part of your application. And ultimately, embracing the challenge of a standardized test and showing improvement. Specifically, you might want to actually show that you took it once, didn't do as well as you might like, might have liked, and continue to prep to get better and show that story and tell it as part of how badly you want to go and pursue your MBA. So now that we've decided that we need a standardized test as part of the application, what does this specific exam evaluate? Well, it's logic and problem solving skills, which you'll need as part of your MBA path. You'll need to be able to use logic and problem solving academically and, of course, professionally once you go on further in your career. So this is not a math test nor an English test and should not be considered as one. What it does is it tests logic and problem solving skills using the languages of math and English. And what I mean by that is this is a global test. It can be taken anywhere in the world and the native language of the test taker may or may not be English. But the Arithmetic, the algebra is pretty close to universal at this point, and English is largely the accepted language of business. So this test just uses those languages, but is not itself a test of math and English. So you have to approach it slightly differently because memorizing English rules and math formulas will simply not be enough to excel at the endeavor. Instead, you need to fully develop several foundational skills that we will cover in this course and apply them creatively when you're taking the test. Because the skills that are most rewarded on the math side, that's going to be flexibility and approach. Deciding how to get to the right answer of the five that are presented in the most efficient manner without necessarily using the technical way, because the technical way might take too long. Maybe you can logically evaluate the situation. Maybe you can use an alternative tactic, such as back solving or plugging in. And of course, sometimes the technical approach will be best. But being able to choose in the moment what is best is, again, kind of a business style skill that the exam is evaluating. And consistency in evaluating the reading comprehension passages and the critical reasoning prompts is going to be the best path to, path to verbal success. Because on the verbal section, your job is to show that those answers are as objective as anything that's mathematic. It's not a matter of, ooh, there's two of them and they're both kind of right. No, every wrong answer is wrong for a definitive reason. And you want to use logic to show why each incorrect answer is wrong and why your correct answer is, in fact, the right one. So what are those foundational skills that are tested? First, it's going to be manual calculation using the four basic arithmetic operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, because in the quantitative section of this test, obviously, there is no calculator. So you have to do the math yourself, and you will actually benefit scholastically if you're able to do some of these number sense sorts of things. You'll also become more familiar with different standard math notations including our non-integer notations of fractions, decimals, and percentages, and exponent and radical notation as well. 
You'll also be tested on your ability to analyze data from information graphics and interactive tables. Again, the sorts of information that you can expect to encounter in your MBA and future business work. You'll also be learning how to understand and synthesize information from unfamiliar written scenarios. So you're going to be given little passages, the reading comprehension that you don't recognize, you're not necessarily an expert on, but you have to glean the information's most important facts and main ideas in a similar fashion that you will in certain business environments. You'll also be addressing basic argumentation and common logical flaws, so how to make a convincing argument, which obviously a pitch naturally is, and how to identify some flaws in arguments so you can help yourself to identify and note when a pitch, a plan, kind of seems like it has some holes in it. And you'll also want to identify and avoid unwarranted assumptions in your thinking because you can't assume things, and we know that there's an aphorism out there for what assuming does in English, and we don't want to assume things in business because that obviously can open yourself up to relatively big risks. And for the GMAT Focus Edition, they took the time to omit some more obscure tasks, including memorizing complex geometric formulas. Geometry is largely going to be absent from this exam. There are some exceptions, but they're not going to require you to memorize things such as the formula for circles in the coordinate plane. You also will not have to write any essay on an arbitrary topic. And you won't have to work just kind of ad nauseum on obscure vocabulary. And you probably can tell that a lot of these things are still part of the GRE prep area if you're considering that as an alternative to the GMAT when you're looking at application exams as part of your admissions process. So this will allow you to build skills for future use, as we were kind of talking about. You'll be able to master fractions and percents to facilitate better budgeting and negotiating because you'll be able to split things up. You'll be able to determine more solidly what percentages and splits are occurring in your business plan. You'll be able to learn to manipulate exponents and track growth expectations because obviously exponential growth is kind of one of the things that's the goal of many, especially entrepreneurial MBA candidates. You may personally very much dislike word problems, but the comprehension of them is really important because you'll have similar scenarios that you'll encounter in business. And if you are able to work through the word problems in the GMAT focus, you might be better positioned to understand rates of return and things of that nature, interest, that sort of thing. You also want to foster your ability to focus when you're reading unfamiliar texts to allow yourself to gather the main idea. And that will hopefully help encourage comprehension of future business proposals that you may not understand yourself in great detail, but you can understand the big picture so you can comment and hopefully use that to your advantage in business dealings. You'll also have the opportunity to build your ability to understand the basics of arguments and inferences to identify logical flaws in plans. So you're able to say, actually, that isn't necessarily true. For instance, you might say, you might have somebody who says, you know what would be great? A peanut butter and tuna sandwich because people love peanut butter and people love tuna. And you go, actually, just because they like things individually, that doesn't mean that they're going to like it together. Now, this exam also allows you to avoid studying too much for content that has that limited application. Things like vocabulary, speed writing, which is really what you have to do to get to the highest level score of the essay on the GRE, and obscure geometry, which again is going to be tested in the GRE if you're considering that as an alternative more so than it would be in the GMAT focus. So you don't want to look at the GMAT focus as an obligation. Instead, consider it an application opportunity. And here's why. You have several parts of your application that are static. They can't change, including, of course, your college GPA. It is what it is. Hopefully it's great. But if it's not, the GMAT score can offset that to a degree. Your work experience, where you've worked is where you've worked. You can't go back in time and change that. As well as your extracurriculars in college and your personal history. 
that is set in stone. But your GMAT focus score can improve with practice. And that's what we're here to do in our course. So hopefully this video has answered why we think it's in your best interest as part of your MBA application process to choose the GMAT Focus Edition and attempt to improve it as a very important part of your application packet.